stand guard over Northern Ireland's border are a constant reminder of its turbulent past. The British troops that man them longing for peace as much as the people who live in their shadow. Well, I suppose you'd be glad to go home and leave it behind. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a bit, yeah. But driving along the border for every bomb-proof fortress you see, there are miles of open fields, a paradox not lost on one local historian. John, we've just um, passed this extraordinary fortified border point, crossing mm -hmm. point up the road, but it can't be like that across the whole border line. No, and, and most places are around here, the, the border is sort of totally invisible. In fact, this house here is sitting on the border. And if you uh, sleep in that bedroom of the house there, you're sleeping in the south of Ireland. And if you sleep in that bedroom there, you're sleeping in the north of Ireland. You've spent years of your life studying the history of this area, the history of its people, the history of its borders. Can you see a time in the near future when you can rub out this borderline on a map? Well, I think it, it, it's, uh, in many ways, it doesn't exist in, in the minds of many people along the border. Uh, I think it exists more in the minds of politicians and it exists in, in people's minds further away from the border. If you can see across the border from one field to another, if you can physically step across the border, if you can just walk down a field and cross the border without knowing that it's there, uh, that sort, of, uh, um, that sort of border will vanish very quickly. So often Northern Ireland already has an invisible boundary as it crisscrosses its way over mountains.